welcome back to Vigor. It's your boy, Stealth Jet, leader of the JSS. And you know, it's been a while since I've said what the JSS is. The JSS stands for Jet's Stealth Squadron. The Stealth Squadron is my Discord. So check the uh, description of this video to find a Discord link. Now, granted, I do have like requirements to be level two of the JSS, but level one is just join a Discord, man. It's a new player haven. Everybody comes in there, shares their stories. You know, we laugh at memes and uh, generally a good time. You don't have to participate, you know, just join and just sit back and watch, you know? But I'll get into what level two of the JSS requirements are. But I want you to listen to this single sentence that I'm going to say, which is also the video title. Death knows no distance. And you'll find out what that means by the end of this video. So, at the beginning of this match, you notice I'm always looking around me. Anakin is a perfect training map to train your eyes on what Outlanders look like from a distance. You see, the developers knew what they were doing. Nothing in this freaking game moves besides that one elevator on a new map. That's it. Nothing moves but trees. No cars, no trucks, no trains, no trams, nothing. And so if you spot something moving in the distance, nine times out of 10, that's an Outlander. The one time out of 10 is the uh, dis uh, detector spinning in the air. Yeah, that caught me a couple of times. I'm going to say that and I'm going to stand by that statement. So, I bring that to your attention as I reload this newly buffed shotgun. I bring that to your attention because, like I said, Anakin's perfect map. And it's perfect for this because, one, there's no cover, visual or hard cover and two look at the elevation granted there's some elevation but look what's behind you the sky it's really easy to spot a moving target against a still background think about it like this if you're looking in the sky right and you see a plane flying overhead you know it's a plane because the plane is moving and the sky isn't. Assuming the sky is a clear blue sky with no clouds. The outlander is the plane. The sky is the sky. And look, I'm pretty loaded up, ain't I? I know, crazy. You never see me hold this many weapons in one video before. I know, pretty crazy. But if you wanna know more about what I mean by visual training, I literally have a video entitled Anakin Visual Training. Check that out. So as I'm running through here, I'm a Crestus Ridge and I hear somebody. I'm like, yo, where they're at? Where are they? Right there. Now look, I'm going to say this right now. I've been saying that phrase a lot recently. I'm going to say this right now. I repent for my sin. I do. And it's not the shot I'm about to miss. Hopefully, I just convinced that guy to buy headphones. You see, players, this is why I always tell you to buy headphones. Because if he had any kind 
of like heightened sense of hearing due to headphones. He would have heard me coming over that ridge. And he would have shot me like what? Four times without Luger. But I already had my shotgun out and ready just in case he did exactly that. Now I didn't want to shoot him point blank range with the most powerful sniper rifle in the game. I wanted to do it with a magnum. But time is of the essence. And I did let off a really huge sound with this rifle. So I'm gonna loot this container. And I say that because I want number one, I want what's in it. And number two, from what it sounds like, all the teams are near the barred house on the other side of the map. Which means this right here is all mine. Dubious decision. Dubious decision. I'm going to take an H bar T, not an ADR 97. And I take the H bar T purely because it also has a scope. The ADR 97, granted, it has, it has a little nice little scope on it too. But I use the AD, I use the H bar T more than the ADR 97. Also, H bar T has a pretty. I don't want to say it hurt. No, you know what? There's literally no advantage besides it has a scope. Everything else, the ADR would have been a better choice. So, with that being said, I actually regret leaving the ADR behind now. I'm gonna keep it moving. So I mentioned what the level two uh, classification, there you go, classification of the JSS is. All right, so I'm gonna list them out. You have to have at least 100 encounters played. You have to have at least 51% or greater survival rate. And you have to have at least two suppressed weapon plans because we're stealthy here. And that's it. No kill requirements, no KPE requirements, none of that. Because we don't care about kills. We don't. But at the same time too, sometimes we do get a little bit, um, how can I put this? Opportunistic? And we want to be silent while we do get a little bit quote unquote opportunistic. What do I mean by that exactly? Well, death knows no distance. When I say get a little bit opportunistic, that means you take shots at targets of opportunity. We don't go in, or at least most of us don't. I'm looking at you, ghosty number one, or ghosties number one. We don't go in all guns blazing and try to kill everything we see in sight. No. Instead, what we do is we wait for an opportunity to arise. And once that opportunity presents itself, then we act using said suppressed weapons. In order to maintain our stealthy presence, now look, stealthy weapons are not 100% silent, I know that. But they're a hell of a lot more quiet than a whole M82 going off. They're a hell of a lot more quiet than a whole ZA M76 going off. And must I must give it one more. They're a hell of a lot more quiet than an H bar T going off. Know what I'm saying? Now like I said, death knows no distance. Imagine, imagine killing everybody at the time at the Bard House, not time safe. Imagine killing everybody at the Bard House. You and your buddy are in the house, divvying up the loot. Now all of a sudden you hear one shot and you see your buddy fall limp. What are you, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Hunt down a player that killed your friend. But how would you know if, how would you know where they're coming from if your buddy doesn't tell you where they're being shot at or shot from? One hit is all it takes to the head.
Now, granted, this was not a headshot, but you know, M82 is powerful as hell. So, upper chest area, kill. At that distance. At that distance. Now, you see, I'm looking right here to see if his buddy dipped. And maybe I can catch him going toward this exit over here, which is also in the open. But I don't see anything. And yeah, I'm waiting for a long time. Don't see anything. So his buddy probably dipped as soon as he heard that shot. You see, there are moments like this that makes me keep playing the game. Because it's just like, everybody's worried about everybody's teams. But no one takes into the account that one solo player in this one lobby that has all the freedom in the world. Now granted, it's dangerous freedom because take one wrong path and you're spotted by three different people and you die. But nobody worries about me. Until I announce my presence with maybe one or two shots and one or two bodies drop. That sounded kind of aggressive. You know what? I'm keeping this in here. So, true, true sign of pure aggression and no loot. Look at the amount of ammo this guy has. And barely any loot to boot. And yes, I meant for that to round. Yeah. That's the reality of teams. Now look, did he know he was making a mistake? No, not really. Did I show him he was making a mistake? Yes. You're never safe in this game. Ever. Unless you do this. Unless you see that message and you confirm that there are no jammers on a map which can hide Outlander's positions, you're truly safe. Like, 100% safe until radiation rears its ugly head and forces you out the map. That is when you know you're good. And so I did take more of a risk than usual and run across the map to the detector, grabbed the airdrop, and then left. And so what do we come out this encounter with? One disgusting, probably karma-inducing headshot, and one kill on a guy who thought he was safe because he was in a house. A house with a wide open ass doorway. Remember folks, death knows no distance. And you are never safe in this game. When you understand those two statements entwined together like sweet and sour chicken, then you'll understand the basic basic fundamentals of this game and i know this game is hard that's why i make these videos to try to help out you new players because one day you won't be the guy who i killed with the m82 in the back of the head other uh, another day you'll be the guy who killed me which ends up on a learn from my mistakes video because i want you all to be better than me that's my goal that's why I make these videos. I hope y'all have enjoyed this episode. And I'll catch you in the next one. Until next time, peace.